Hi everyone, this is Peter Cole and I'm back talking about acoustic panels and acoustic treatment for my home recording studio. If you missed my previous video, I teach you step by step how to build one of these panels. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But for now we're focused on the how and the why of mounting the panels. So how do I physically mount it on the wall? But also why? Why did I choose that spot in the room to place an acoustic panel? And that, of course, goes into a lot more detail around room acoustics and the idea of making your room sound the best for your music. So before we actually mount this panel on the wall and I show you how I do that, first, let's talk more about the why. Why am I placing it there in the room? So here on the screen is a diagram of my studio. It's not to scale. Um, at least not perfectly to scale, but it'll give us an idea of how the room is laid out and where I'm placing the acoustic treatment within the room. So first let's get a little oriented. On the left hand side here, this is where the front door is, where you walk in. There's a little rest area, I call it the lounge, even though it's really just a place with a sofa where I can kick back and rest if I need to. And then moving on through the room, this is the main area here, and this is where my desk is. This is where I keep the keyboard, computer monitors, I have some hard drives over on this desk over here, and then of course the speakers um, are right here behind the desk. So with regards to acoustic treatment, the first thing I look for are the areas of first reflection. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you look at the speakers here, the areas, the surfaces that will be reflecting sound first as the sound comes out of the speakers, those are called first reflections and they're going to hit the wall they're they're actually going to hit your desk here they're going to even hit your computer monitors and you're going to be getting sound coming to your ears at different times you want to treat those early reflections by putting absorbing material around them so that the sound gets absorbed by the material and doesn't bounce back or, or you know reflect back to your ears so the first area the first early reflections are going to be probably this wall right here because I have these speakers and while it is a good foot or two away from the wall, by the way you always want to have your speakers a good foot or two away from the wall, you're still going to get some sound out of that speaker and it's going to hit that wall immediately and if you don't have some absorbing material it's going to reflect back and so this is a good area to treat those early reflections. Another good area is to the left and right of the speakers the walls over here where unfortunately I have a window that I really like looking out of so I'm going to put some blankets there some very very thick blankets I'm going to try that first because this is a definitely a, an area of concern where there could be some early reflections if that doesn't work I will probably have to place acoustic panels um, on top of the window you know I might make it something where I can put them on and then take them off so I can look out the window when I want. And it's the same thing here on the other side of the wall. Um, this is going to be a wall that's going to have some early reflection issues because it's close to the speaker. So I, I'm going to be placing an acoustic absorber there. And then once again, I have another window. So I will probably be putting blankets there as well. And then the final area of of um, early reflections that I'm going to be treating is the ceiling, which you can't obviously see from this diagram, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go right above the whole control area here, above the speakers for sure, and I have some leftover uh, Oralex acoustic foam. It's not the most effective to be honest, but it's good for my, my budget right now until I get some more money to, to put some more fancier acoustic panels on the ceiling. But the Oralex foam will do okay. It's not going to help absorb any bass frequencies. It's too thin for that, but it'll help It'll help tame some of the, the mid and certainly, I, I hope, some of the higher frequencies. So those are my areas of first reflection. The back wall right behind the speakers, the side wall to the left and right of the speakers, and the ceiling above the speakers. Okay, so now step two. The next thing I look at are the corners of the room. The corners of the room are where the bass frequencies build up and that's going to make your mix, or excuse me, that's going to make your room sound more muddy than your music is. So you're going to want to put some thicker acoustic absorbers there. So I'm basically doubling up the acoustic panels that I'm using for the walls 
I'm going to have twice as thick panels in the corners because you want the thicker material in the corner to absorb those really low frequencies. So I'm going to be placing one base trap in each corner. And I actually have um, some leftover Oralex base traps. So I'm going to build my own because I have a quite, a quite a tall ceiling in my, in my space, which I'm grateful for. But I, I'm not, I don't have quite enough material to, to cover the whole wall on myself. So I'm going to build about um, half of it will be my own base trap that I build. And then I'll put an Oralex acoustic uh, base trap um, on the top of that. So it'll be almost full length. Okay, and then step number three, and the final step for me anyway, is adding some diffusion in the room. So what does that mean? So, so far, all the material I've talked about has been an absorbing material. The acoustic panels are going to absorb the sound as it hits the wall or hits the ceiling or goes into the corners. And that's good. We want it to absorb that sound so we don't get all these reflections um, blasted back at us. At the same time, it can also start to deaden up the room a bit. So placing diffusers, which if you look on the left side of the diagram here, this is my beautiful drawing of a diffuser. And by the way, I spelled diffuser wrong. I think it's spelled S-E-R. But what it does is it, it creates a little more openness and air in the, in the um, room because as the sound is hitting each one of these weird looking shapes of the diffuser it's going to it's going to be sending that sound energy off kind of in a, a different direction so it never builds up basically so unlike an absorber that's going to absorb the sound not let it reflect um, a diffuser is not going to absorb it it's going to make sure that it doesn't build up the same and that basically just helps the sound or the room be more open. I don't have a lot of them, to be honest. Um, I'm going to, I bought a diffuser. It's actually an Oralex diffuser left over from my old studio. And I'm going to try that, but I'm also going to try building my own because I think it would be fun. Okay, so those are the three steps of room acoustics. Number one, treat the early reflections. Those are the surfaces around your speakers. Step two, treat the bass buildup that happens in the corners. And step number three, add some diffusion in the room to break up the sound and give it a more open sound. All right, well, thanks again for watching. And now let's talk about mounting the panels. All right, so the final step is to mount this bad boy on the wall. As you know from, if you watched my previous video, you know that I went to uh, Lowe's and I just bought um, a painting mounting kit. So, or you could buy a mirror mounting kit. Um, these are kits that are used to mount paintings and mirrors, super cheap, a couple bucks each. Um, and it's really just consists of a, a little hook that you screw into each side and then some wire. And then I attach it like that. And then you can see it's gonna hang because these things aren't that heavy. Um, it's going to hang, and I then place another hook I attach to the wall, and now I can just attach this just like I would hang a painting. So let me do that for you. This is a little bit tricky. Hopefully I can do it on camera. But you just slide it in there like that, and voila. You've got acoustic panels mounted on your wall. What I don't have is my trusty level to make sure it's level, but I'll get that in a minute. That's it, acoustic panel. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. Hopefully it gave you a good intro to room acoustics in general and how to apply some of these principles to your own home studio. It really helps when you can reduce some of those early reflections, as well as control your low-end content. It's just going to help make your mixes sound that much better. But if you do have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have to say that, right? That's the YouTube thing. Like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.